Hey guys, welcome to Ola Wave channel. We are a channel that reads the latest speech and NLP papers, including the archived works. Today, we're going to be sharing the infamous paper clip by OpenAI. Uh, and its title is Learning Transferable Visual Models from Natural Language Supervision. Just remember, um, it's actually clip paper. And I also had uh, read another paper by, by OpenAI. It's called Whisper. It's about how to leverage uh, weak supervised labels uh, in speech recognition. It leveraged the 680,000 hours of a weekly labeled speech to train a super large ASR model. Uh, you can find the paper reading in my channel. Okay, about the clip paper. First of all, uh, what is it about? Um, it's a pre-trained model for image. And uh, how many data it uses? It uses 400 million image and text pairs. So frankly speaking, I am not a computer vision people. So 400 million image and text pair is a vague number to me. I don't know how much it means uh, because uh, I think um, the author do mention that in the other works. Yeah, if you see the section 2.2, they say MS Coco and the visual genome are highly quality crowded label data sets. And they have a, a, a hundred K Im images in it. But well, there are some other computer system they are trained on up to 3.5 billion Instagram photos and the YFCC 100 million uh, 100 million photos so I really don't know what does the 400 million mean it seems to me it's a big number okay then I think I will start from the introduction first of all we also talked about task Agnostic objectives. What does that mean? Um, it means that when people train the pre-trained model for NLP, for example, BERT. As we all know, um, if you look at the, the, the final trained model of BERT, it's basically just a an, an super large encoder with lots of parameters. So it, as long as you fed, uh, feed and text input into the, the BERT model of the encoder, it will give you an embedding. Then the, the embedding is indeed uh, so-called task agnostic because the objective when you train a BERT is task agnostic because you use the autoregressive methods and the mask language model, which means that you don't need a task to train a model. If you're not student, kind of confused with what I said, and just a search, I think you can either search BERT or Transformer in my channel. I have my own uh, paper reading on these uh, classical papers. Okay. And uh, well, one, one interesting thing is that they say the the, the 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 works that i think these these few papers are fairly good you you if you have time you should read them because uh these papers they are talking about uh, a, 
a very hot topic in NLP. It's about the zero shot learning or zero shot transfer. What does that mean? Really, you are given some data with labels of the specific task. So you can just fine tune a task specific model for your target domain. But lots of time, especially for an NLP task, you're not given any training data or adaptation data or fine tune data. You're just asked to um, run run your task, and the, and the other people just give you a bird model or a butter model to to work on. And this is a definition of zero shot transfer learning. Okay. And the 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 beautiful the beautiful thing of the bird or the training model of NLP is that remember this uh, I think they also did a very good uh, writing uh, work they remove the need for specialized output heads or data specific customization that means uh, in my word no fine-tuned data set is needed for instance uh, I think uh, all of you might heard of the system GPT-3. Even if you're not working on AI, everybody knows GPT-3, right? The the nice thing of GPT-3 is it's it's so generic, and it can work on any uh, domain. What would I mean? Because you know there are tons of a uh, registered user who is using GPT-3, or the latest one is a. Uh, a chat GPT, right? So when you're different people talking to it, that means the task domain is changing from A to B and B to C and different tasks. But you can see that for all these tasks, these users do not give it any uh, training data or fine-tuned data to work with. These are all zero-shot learning, but it, it, the, the chat GPT or GPT-3 worked uh, fairly good or acceptably well. And so this is a beautiful thing of having a, a pre-trained model in your NLP system, okay? And uh, the next thing I think you wanna just highlight this, that the, the author did mention that this is an aggregated supervision, accessible modern pre-training method within your web scale collection of the text surpassed at high quality crowded label data sets so i think it only happened in the recent five years people start to leverage uh, weekly label data for instance something like the web scale the collection of text so i would say these texts are has have a lots of noise in it uh, what do i mean by noise the the labels are not very um reliable or how do you say that the texts are not in the in the orthodox way because you can see a lot of grammar mistakes in it for example they say he come school or um, i bread no eat something like this right it's all web skill thing other than just a, a high quality cloudy label the nope data set sometimes you can just remove any grammar mistakes in it or label or just tag those grammar errors in it but when you're using the web scale data there's no way or there's no need to have human beings to get involved in these uh, uh, super time consuming and the uh, costly uh, crowdsource data annotation process um, I, and I think uh, remember <laughs> Probably five years ago, even ten years ago, there's a lots of um, companies are working on uh, labeling your data. They offer service to label your data, for instance, or autonomous driving. I remember that in at least five years ago, or even ten years ago, 
um, this autonomous driving thing, at least five years ago, they're saying that this autonomous driving company, they leverage a lot the companies in China, India to use the affordable laborers to help them to label the or tag the cars in the images so they can train their object detection by using this uh, uh, so-called high quality quality label data set but nowadays I don't think uh, um, you have to label that thing so it's all using pre-train model or leveraging this type of noisy data or using synthetic data nobody is using the high quality crowdsource uh, label data of course NLP people might start this, this even earlier than the computer vision people uh, and the uh, speech people the, and also the key word is that this model surpassed and the, the label data set. So that means that um, the amount of weekly label data set or the amount of data without label is indeed more effective than spending time and money on labeling limited amounts of data. Okay. Okay. I think one thing I want to mention here is here they talk about uh, um, YFCC 100 million data set thing. Uh, they perform pre preform. What is that? I think Apple uh, perform the similarity to ImageNet based pre training on transfer task. Um, I think, uh, and after that, Lee et al, they extended this approach to predict the phrase in gram. So is that, does that mean previously the model is trained like uh, using an image as input, but uh, uh, the output is bigger words? So this is a neural network model, right? Output is supposed to be a bag of words. Mm. But later on, the will just to change the bag of words to engrams. Yeah, I didn't read these papers, so, but you can definitely see the involvement of the, 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 the training, okay? This happened in 2016, and this happened in 2017. You can see more and more sophisticated model got introduced into the this domain. But I think I will cover. Um, I think all the author will uh, talk about the limitation of this method. Uh, I can give you a quick um, shot here. So. Basically, these trainings, they are all uh, focusing on uh, estimating the exact words or exact word engram, word-based engram. Um, but uh, the, the, the method they propose in this work clip, they do not just uh, focusing on, or they do not focus on learning the, the exact words. But they are trying to put an image in it and trying to learn the, I think to me it's like more like semantic information from the image or they want to learn a, a word, in, they wanted to estimate a word representation, word level representation from the image. So that's the big, biggest difference of the proposed method to the uh, past method or most of the methods five years which were proposed at least three or five years ago. Okay, um, I will continue the introduction because I thought the introduction did a very good job. Yeah, just like I mentioned, this is the key thing you want to take home. Using natural language supervision of information, you rare. But there are some work. Uh, 
um, I have to mention that the clip work is not brand new. It's uh, built upon some existing works. You can see there, they borrowed a lot of ideas from the um, late, lately published work. And they also were very nice to address this. Oh, they, they, they properly address the reference. <laughs> um, right. And they also, the other thing they, they want to mention is that uh, suppose originally you want to train from image to words, right? Indeed, the words are actually classes, right? If you think about uh, image recognition, the classes are mostly gestures or objects or nuns or something like this for example cat dog or run or, or eat 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 a bread something like this but they have to limit the number of classes to not over from 10k to 20k You may say, hey, wait, uh, there are way more objects in the natural environment. I agree with you. There are probably more than 100 million or 1 billion objects. Um, but the thing is, if, if you're training a model, and then model output should be a soft max, right? Uh, so it's very hard for the neural network model to have a soft max larger than 20K because it will make the the output super large um makes the training very slow and also the other thing is for the inference inference is important you can have a slow training right it takes time you can just uh, scale up uh, by using more gpu so you can reduce your training period but uh, when you have a very large soft max there's no way or almost no way for you to reduce your inference time because usually the inference would be running on just one GPU. Even if you use a quantization, then the size of the classes won't change, right? So your model output is very large and it makes your, your inference very slow. Okay. But, But to think about this, uh, if you are just not training on classes, but you train a on the natural language using natural language as a supervision um, out output, and that you would be able to train. Let me use the red red pen. A much wider set of visual concepts. What do I mean? What did they mean by this? So suppose they only come up with using 500 words, okay? But using 500 words, you can uh, come up with a different combination of words, right? So you can come up with way more uh, concept, visual concepts than the merely 5,000 words. You can probably just have gazillions amounts of visual concepts. So this is a great advantage over the class-based uh, training method, okay? Yeah, then, and also one thing I want to take home is that this is called the dynamic outputs, right? So you can see that I do not just uh, you have a fixed output of 5,000. I can have a combination of words as my output because suppose I, I'm having a autoregressive method on so right, so I can have a, a word sequence keeping output from my model. So my model can output the word sequence, and the word sequence represent this can be is redeemed as dynamic. Can be so this is a natural language, and it represents visual concepts and more more visual concepts than just the twenty thousand as people did before. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think the authors keeping addressing their thing, okay? 
they're exploring learning the image representation directly from the natural language. Okay. And the key is a scale. Um, I think the here they want to address that um, you have to have lots of data to train this uh, uh, computer vision pre-trained model. The, the fundamental reason I think they want to have a lot of data, I think is, um, I remember one sentence, the they, they, people mentioned that fairly good in, um, in one of the, somebody controlling my mouse. Oh, I, I will just uh, give up um, in my mouse. Oh, it's not somebody controlling my mouse. It's my um, hand. I want to show you one of the notes I took from one of the open AI they wrote. I think it's of the one. Or I didn't prepare this. I don't think you would be able to see my password. Yeah, this is a note I took when I read one of the uh, open AI papers. Um, the paper is also a famous paper. Um, I think I read this paper before. Okay, it's called language models are unsupervised multitask learners. Um, I don't think I can do better than merely reading the text, okay? I would start from here. Uh, language model is also being able to learn the task of the 2018 work, also OpenAI work, without the need for explicit supervision of which symbols are the outputs to be predicted? What do they mean by this? They mean they can not also the, the meaning of the clip they mentioned in the introduction, okay? They're meaning that they do not have to learn the exact word or the symbols or the characters. Um, because since the supervised objective is the same as unsupervised objective, but only evaluated on a subset of the sequence. Very nice rewritten. And the global minimum of the, the unsupervised objective is also the global minimum of the supervised objective. What does it mean by this? And uh, this um, body text means that Think about this, you, when you train your uh, supervised uh, objective, uh, you, you, you have lots of tasks. For each task, you're just focusing on one part of the, the data, and but you have a, a task, okay? You find the minimum. But the think about the way they train their uh, unsupervised model. Well, it's fundamentally the same thing. It's only they train everything in one round or or train everything together, okay? And in this way, there's just a saying that the global minimum of the unsupervised objective is also the global minimum of the supervised objective because if you do the, if you train separately, then some is equivalent than uh, train everything in one batch or one, one, in once, in one time. In this slide toy setting, the concern with density estimation as a principal training objective discussed in this are sidestepped. The problem instead becomes whether we are able to, in practice, 
optimize the unsupervised objective to convergence. The preliminary experiments confirm that sufficient large language models are able to perform multitask learning in this toyish setup, but learning is much slower than in explicitly supervised approach. This is understandable because you have a more data, and the objective is not that certain as explicitly supervised approach because they have a way smaller amount of data compared to this and a way more uh, certain goal to reach. And so the, 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 it's really, I would say, and for the large language model, the challenge would very much be how to optimize the objective for loss function. Or in, in my word, how to find the, the right learning rates and the, together with the loss function to make the model to converge. Well, luckily, uh, People nowadays are um, using, especially for the vision and speech people, uh, we are using the contrastive loss a lot. And that loss uh, is convergible. This is a really beautiful thing. Uh, with a proper uh, learning rate scheduling and the different type of temperature, whatever they call it, uh, the, the model with a super large amount of data. The model indeed, although it uses a lot of GPU, takes a lot of days, uh, consume lots of power, the model eventually it could converge. This is a beautiful thing. Okay. I would uh, go back to the paper now. Yeah, come back to the thing. So I hope now you get better understanding of the key thing they talk about here, which is scale. Okay. And uh, here, they also talk about what does the clip represent, or it's abbreviated, it's abbreviation of contrastive language image pre-training, okay? Remember, contrastive is a key. They do the image thing, and they do pre-training. And because they, they use the natural language as a objective, so it's clip, okay. Now I think we can move on to the approach. And I think I wanna just highlight this again. Uh, it seems that the, um, the authors are fairly how do you say that? Like to repeat things again and again. I don't want to repeat this. And also the natural language of supervision instead of the word supervision. Super read it by yourself. And that I think this is important. Uh, it's much easier to scale natural language uh, supervision compared to the standard cloud sources label, right? Uh, since why? It does not require annotation to be in a classic machine learning compatible format. Okay. Such as a canonical one to n majority vote as golden label. Right. But this is, I think, I don't want to explain it. And then in, instead, um, the people, uh, the method, and uh, in this work or lots of deep other works, they worked on natural language and uh, natural language. You can learn passively from the supervision containing a vast amount of text on the internet. So you don't need the human labelers or cross source uh, labeler. Bad news for this uh, cross source companies, okay? Because they're probably running out of uh, revenue very soon. Uh, powerful per train model. And uh, I think we want to read this. I think this is also very nicely written. 
the learning from natural language can enable flexible zero shot transfer. And also it connects that representation to language. So that means for the vision task, they can do the same thing as uh, NLP people in when they're facing a zero shot issue, okay? Because the 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 model has learned some what do you call it, semantic or natural language representation. So it's also zero shot uh, transfer capable. Okay. Uh, they talk about uh, their their creation of a super large data set. Um, I think I will skip this. I don't I don't think you would have a difficulty understanding this. Um, and then they talk about how do you select the efficient pre-training method. I think they also they talk about this thing again and again. Uh, the previous method they, they, they try to train the exact words, but in this work they use the contrastive objective, okay, and they take the text as a whole, other than take uh, the text as uh, separate words. Uh, here I want to say something to my Chinese audience. Uh, this is more like a, a 整句模型, okay. Um, and it will say that um, talk about the efficiency. They do have compare the efficiency uh, on the task. You can see that. Suppose they, 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 they just train that the baseline is the back of word prediction. Uh, but when they use the transfer language model, the model size becomes three times bigger when they're reaching the same accuracy. That means the efficiency got reduced by three times from here to here, okay? But uh, I think eventually they're going to be using their clip based method, which is the green line. And uh, compared to the baseline, the yellow line, they are capable of increasing the efficiency by four times because they do use the contrastive loss, I think. And it is using the on, on top of the backwards uh, criteria. Uh, so I think, so correcting me if I'm wrong, uh, lots of computer vision guys. Um, I, I think one of the biggest contribution these people did was uh, they proposed the method, they significantly increased, uh, increased the, the efficiency, okay, of their training. But what well, people, people say, okay, uh, how about we just uh, train the traditional transformer language model? Right? It's doable, right? You, you can also train the model up on this, and it might still work, but it's way slower than the than the basic method. But uh, when they also propose their way way of training, and indeed it increases training speed by four times when they have the same accuracy. Okay. Yeah, truth and scaling method. Okay, I think now it's time for us to take a look at the, the model. Uh, finally comes to the model stage, okay? So how does the, the clip do? So it's a contrastive... What? You can pause the video. Is it contrastive? language and the image for training. This is a clip, right? <laughs> clip. 
And you can see that this is text and this is a pair. The text is paired with the, the image. This is a pair. And the, the text was sent into a text encoder. The text encoder is just a transformer encoder. Very straightforward, right? And the image encoder, as they mentioned, that is uh, ResNet 50 with attention holding. I think it's fairly straightforward. For those of you who know who I know what is ResNet and the attention pooling, you can just refer to uh, my transformer paper reading. I think I covered something of this. Um, you may ask why do they, they didn't use transformer in image decoder? Uh, my understanding is that computer vision are liking or, or they may have to just use a convolutional filters a lot convolutional layers a lot so it has to be um, convolutional and convolutional again and again other than transformer because if, if you see the transformer i don't think it has a convolutional layers right it's just the transformer blocks so the uh, it's a resnet 50 is a stack of uh, lots of convolution layers with a resnet connection uh, while at the pooling stage, uh, instead of the what they call it, the the max pooling or global average the pooling, they use the attention pooling. So it has attention. Attention is better, although it's uh, get a slightly. It might get slower. It, it's getting slower compared to just the global average or average max pooling. These double thing attention gets slower, and then. So uh, after you get a transformer, you get an embedding of the text, all right? And then also you get the embeddings of the image. Sorry, I should draw some. This is the text embedding. And then this is the image embedding. Okay. Then what next? And then, uh, of course, they uh, after they 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 pass uh, through the convolutional, uh, pass through the image and the text encoder. It actually there is a trans transformation or linear projection. This is the uh, text projection. This is the image projection. So they make sure that the dimension of the projecting embeddings are the same of when comparing text and image so they can form a contrastive or similarity matrix so you can see that uh, suppose this 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 size is n and this size is also n right so they have an n by n matrix so on the diagonal element what what it should be um on the diagonal element, uh, the higher value the value is, the, the better the learning values are. You understand this? Why well, is a setting? And you can choose your way of uh, organizing, choosing which element to be um, you, you like, okay? I think the order doesn't matter. Um, you can, I think, for instance, uh, you can choose this setting. You can say, okay, I want the third, uh, the, the image, image zero, and the text three, a text two, you have one, and this one to be one, this one to be one, and the, probably this to be one, and this to be one. As long as there is a, in, in each row, there's just a one maximum value and in each column there's also just a one maximum value that's fine it doesn't have to be on diagonal but uh, choosing diagonal i think is uh, easy to write the mathematical equation 
and do the calculation, right? So you can see that they choose the diagonal element to be aligned. So they wanted that um, for this pair, they want the element elements to be as high as possible and the, uh, the non diagonal elements to be as smaller as possible. And they do have, uh, and I think in the pseudocode here, you can definitely see they are doing, this is the uh, getting the image encoder. This is like a text encoder. And this is what I talk about. You see, they, they, they did a, a linear transformation here and there, right? And then they normalize. What do they mean? They normalize and, uh, on the projected uh, feature vector dimension, okay? So it's on this dimension. Why do you do this? Um, because you remember you do the cosine similarity, you have to normalize the vector, right? This is a normalization. And all, all these two vectors, uh, they are uh, size of uh, n, but normalized, okay. And then they got these type of uh, logits or cosine similarity, okay? It's fairly easy to understand, right? Just a, they have a dot product of this and this. And what is this? Uh, remember the exponential is like this, right? Uh, usually I think the T, I think they, they later on they talk about the, the, the is it positive or negative? I think it should be negative, but I think it's trivial. Um, I think they want to scale, attenuate the, the logic a little bit to prevent overfitting. And then if you look at the, the next thing, this is what they're talking about, okay? When you have the logits, uh, 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 they have a, they, they calculate the loss on two dimensions, okay? The first one is uh, uh, x is equals to zero. Uh, so you see, go back to here, x is equals to zero. That means uh, they look at uh, each row, okay? I use another color. They look at each row. Remember they, 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 they set this thing, the value here. The set value in this, arrange n. So label it, it is a, a n-dimensional, one-dimensional vector, which is a zero, one, blah, 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 n minus one. Okay. <laughs> um, this is a typical trick to have to run a loss in the contrastive loss calculation. And then in, in each row, so they just want um, how to see this. Um, each row, In each row, the ground truth you can see it's one zero 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 zero. Okay, this is the ground truth, or this is the distribution. It's a spiky distribution, right? And the the actual value on um, or the similarity score might be use another pen, might be zero point nine, zero point zero two. 0 0.03, 0, 0, 0.05. So it's not exactly 1.00. So just so then you can calculate the the loss here. Okay. Is that clear? You can just calculate the cross entropy loss here. Okay. And also you can see that they do this also on the axis equal to one. So they do the same thing, but uh, column wise. Okay. 
let me see if I can give you an example here. Column wise, okay. Let me just remove this. Column wise means they look this direction, okay. Do this and this. Uh, let me take the second column for example. Um, the ground truth, as you know, it's zero one zero zero blah 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 zero. Okay, zero. And the actual value could be 0 0.1, 0 0.9, 0, 0, 0. Okay, there are some errors there. So they calculate the cross entropy loss on this direction. Okay. And you, you may wonder why do you have to do this way and uh, that way? Um, The reason was because, um, let me draw another five by five matrix for you, C2C for example, five by five. Okay. No, I didn't draw it well. Let me draw another one. Five by five. Okay. Do my best draw one five by five. Oh, no, sorry. Four by four, four by four is easier for me. If you only do on the row level, let me draw an example that w which makes you feel something wrong, isn't it? Okay. What if you I have a something like this? One 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 one. And you say, oh wait, the one should be here. Okay. But if you do calculate the loss on the on the row uh, direction, it's perfectly fine, right? <laughs> It's, it's calculable. It's no difference than moving one to here and there. There's no difference. So the only you have do the loss calculation on the row level or column level, you can enforce that, okay, there's only one one on each row and column or something like this. You cannot have two ones on each column or row. Is that clear to you? I hope so. Okay. Did a good job. <laughs> and then I think they didn't, they also just, uh, because they do the two losses and they just added two losses, then average them. So this is, you can see the mass of the clip is fairly straightforward. Okay. I think I will just uh, roughly talk about uh, the inference, then I will stop here today, and that will be uh, part one of this work. So I would uh, resume this one next time. Okay. Uh, how about the inference? You can see um, inference, the thing is, because this model was trained with text and the input, with te uh, image and the text as a pair as input. So doing your inference, even you just want to tell what's in the image, you cannot just uh, input a image into it. You have to also supply the model with some text. For instance, suppose, um, you just want to tell what's this. Um, you just have to say, put this into the, uh, into the, what do you call that? Text in encoder. Very simple. You just say a photo of, or, I mean, I would also want to say that maybe you can also say the, there is what in it. Maybe this is fine too, right? <laughs> but uh, definitely a photo of object would be fine too. And then the text encoder got um, got a embedding. 
an image encoder got just a one embedding, right? Um, oh, I think I, I made the, I think I should, uh, shouldn't use this because this thing, I think, uh, in the classification stage, because this is zero shot, right? Um, that you have to just uh, provide all the uh, possible classes of this image. This is zero shot prediction. Zero shot means you you cannot train on a uh, train or fine tune your model anymore. This is the model you have, and you want to tell what's in the image, but you you know the object is uh, one of the n classes here. Okay, n classes. For example, plane, car, dog, and birds. So you just uh, send compose of a, a photo of a client. Uh, this is uh, number one. So you got to here, and then you input a car, fit it to here, and you put a car here, a photo of car, and then it passed the text encoder. It got to here. I don't want to draw the third and nth until you got n embeddings, okay? And then for the image encoder, you definitely just have one embedding. And then next stage, you would be calculate the cosine similarity of the image embedding with the n text embeddings. Of course, one of the embeddings should have the highest. Uh, Similarity score, and then for instance, uh, this one is dog, right? And then dog got here. And you say, okay, since this is the third one, got the highest uh, similarity score. I look at look it back. Okay, the third prompts contains a of an object called dog. So I think the recognized result should be dog. Clear. I think um, section two. Yeah, I think I just finished up all the section two. Uh, I think training is uh, trivial. It's very scary. Uh, training is too scary to me. I also, uh, they have. Uh, this is very scary, okay. Is that scary to you? Almost 600 V100 GPUs. Yeah, I think each V100 GPU may cost you uh, $10K dollars, probably at that range. And uh, this amount of GPU, a uh, GPU alone, uh, would cost you about $6 million. Scary, right? But I definitely, um, so the question I think um, you, you may ask yourself, I want to be able to answer this. Um, wait, I understand how the uh, clip works. Can I train my model of clips? To me, if you look at this thing, it's probably unlikely. Um, but definitely you can play with a smaller scale, right? Um, let's say you don't train this largest ResNet model, a ResNet 50 times 64. And you suppose what you, you, you size down the model by tens and you size down the, the data by tens, okay? then probably you can just train your own model with just uh, six V100 GPUs in about three weeks. I just do the linear scale down, right? But the question is, if you scale down your model by one tenth, and also you scale down your data size by one tenth, does that make sense? Um, because they also do mention that the scale is the key. So whether we think you can do this, let's see it next time. So the next video, 
I would still continue to review this clip paper, but on the experimental section. Thanks for watching. See you.